every comic book release contains lessons if you look for them, regardless of the content of the book or the motivation of the publisher. This case study is an, endor an endorsement of the subject matter or an analysis of the quality of the book itself. It's a case study of a comics business model that uses one simple marketing principle and one advanced concept to create a successful release. To give context to this case study, let's look at the subject. Eric July is a musician, political commentator, and content creator. He recently launched a crowdfunding campaign for his first comic that has generated an estimated $2.7 million and media coverage in mainstream outlets like Fox News and the New York Post. The image on the screen comes from his recent campaign page. But the explanation for his success and a possible lesson for creators can be found in the foundation and management of the overall campaign. Because successful marketing involves creating satisfying relationships with customers. Once you can identify the ideal customer for your content and you understand the emotional experience they are looking for, the more time you can spend finding, connecting, and building bonds with the people who are most likely to be interested in your project and give you money for it. In this case, Eric July built up a substantial marketing presence long before launching his campaign. Based on current social media numbers, he has almost 138,000 Twitter followers since 2012 and 486,000 YouTube subscribers that he's collected since 2007. So not counting any other social media he may have or his mailing list, that's a potential pool of almost 625,000 people collected over 15 years, which can account for a substantial portion of his campaign success. Because success in crowdfunding is based on the size of your crowd. If you have no crowd, you get no funding, but the bigger your crowd, the more funding you can receive. Common response rates to any marketing campaign hover between one and 5%. And according to July's website, he currently has around 30,000 purchasers or 5% of his social media audience. So the response rate is in line with marketing norms. But crowdfunding norms don't explain the amount of money July has generated. CPI recently did an expert interview with the comics leaded Kickstarter, who informed us that the average backer amount is $25. If you assume that base amount, and multiply it by his current level of backers, you get more than $780,000. That's a huge amount for any comic, but it's more than three times less than the 2.7 million his campaign has generated so far. That means something beyond basic marketing is fueling his campaign. The answer might be found in the advanced marketing concept of defining the opposition. When you define an enemy in your marketing, you identify some aspect of your competition as undesirable and position yourself as a superior alternative. You've seen this in technology advertising with PC versus Mac for computers, and later Android versus Apple for phones. You see it in politics with Biden versus Trump and almost every other political race. You saw it in comics when Stan Lee built up Marvel by offering it as an alternative to DC. July uses the same technique relative to what he defines as woke comments. Defining an enemy triggers emotional responses that are less about the product and more about the subconscious tribal reactions of us versus them. And it's this emotional response that translates into dollars spent. The emotional component of the campaign can explain the average of $86 each backer is spending on this comic. At this point, every dollar they spend is seen as an attack on the opposition. July and the media covering his comic play into that emotional response. Headlines like, Woke comic book defies comics cancel culture, focus all their attention on the perceived impact of their defined opposition. The titles for July's recent YouTube videos concentrate more on who attacked him and how he is defying the forces gathered against his group. It's not really about the comic because the campaign isn't framed as selling a comic. It's seen by the group as funding a movement. 
from my perspective, identifying and relating to his target market got him started, but it is his use of the opposition that brought him close to $3 million. Now, regardless of how you see July or what you're trying to achieve in your comic career, it is helpful to understand that most business tools are impartial and nonpartisan in nature. The things that work can work regardless of your politics or your message. The things that don't work won't start working because of the story you're trying to tell. When you're trying to learn what works and what doesn't, look past the headlines and your personal reaction and figure out why someone is successful. Then, depending on your perspective and your position, you can use or reject the tactics you find. Maybe you don't have 15 years to build up an audience. Maybe you don't want to vilify another group to sell your comic. Maybe you'll conclude that his success is based on something else entirely. If that's the case, let me know what you think in the comments. Again, I'm sure some people will ignore this, but this video isn't really about July or his comic. It's about marketing. So let's try to focus on that in the comments. Thanks for listening, like and subscribe, and have fun with your comments.